Did you ever watch a semi-homemade cooking with Sandra Lee on the Food Network? She'd take boxed or prepackaged foods and mix them with fresh ingredients to make easy and delicious meals. I loved every single thing about that show. And as a young wife who was struggling in the kitchen, Sandra's shortcuts made me feel like I could do that. Well, I did, and 30 years later, I still do. Tonight, I'm sharing some of my quickest and easiest semi-homemade recipes yet. These are packed with flavor and perfect for those busy weeknights when we need every shortcut we can get. I'm Mel, welcome to my kitchen. Now, who doesn't have a couple of half open bags of burritos in their freezer? Is this just my house or does everybody have multiple bags of the same stuff open? <laughs> Now for this recipe, you can use any kind or style of burritos that you like, and you are not gonna pre-cook these. If you wanted to, you could a little bit, but I've never had any trouble with them being real soggy, so I just cook mine straight from frozen. And you're gonna put on an entire can of enchilada sauce. I like red. If you want green, use whatever you like. This is very customizable to whatever you like and just honestly, whatever you have in your cabinet. And this is definitely enough topping. If you had a couple more burritos to squeeze in there, I mean, you could probably cover eight to 10 burritos with this. And I'm taking a four ounce can of green chilies and spreading that over the top. And then comes the cheese. And I'm just finishing out a bag of Colby Jack and then I have some Mexican cheese. Because what is a frozen burrito enchilada casserole without cheese, right? And that is all there is to this. And I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees and I am gonna cover this and you're gonna bake it about 40 or 45 minutes. Then take your aluminum foil off Turn your broiler on, but just watch it real carefully. You do not want those to burn. And I found this recipe from my friend Valerie. Her channel is called Life with Valerie Rose. She made this, and this is like the second time that I've made it now. And I am just doctoring up some refried beans with a little sour cream and some taco sauce. You can see when I am serving this up, how nice those frozen burritos hold together. And I'm gonna build some tostadas to go with this. I'm just putting my beans and my cheese. And you know how I feel about lettuce. I love a lot of crunchy lettuce on my things. And using some pico, some sour cream on my burrito, and this wonderful avocado ranch. We just put this Taco Bell sauce on everything. This is a big bag of tostadas that I had to get when I made crunch wraps. So I'm trying to get these used up. And there's always some in this bag that are broken. So I'm just breaking them up a little bit more and I'm just gonna leave them as some chips. So we have had crunch wraps out of this bag of tostadas and then we've had some tostadas chips with them and I'm going to make another tostada next week out of this but look at these flavors you would think I had been slaving all day in there putting this Mexican inspired dish together but that little cheater frozen burrito saved the day how about a 10 minute KFC bowl I'm using these Purdue chicken nuggets a jar of gravy instant mashed potatoes and canned corn couldn't be any easier than this these little Purdue chicken chunks, this is the first time that I have bought them, and these were so good. And they just cook up in about 10 minutes in the oven. I have got my gravy on the back stove eye warming up, and I have just drained my corn, and I'm gonna throw that in a bowl with a little pat of butter and stick it in the microwave for about a minute and a half to get warmed up. Instant mashed potatoes, all you gotta do is boil water and mix it in. I doctor them up with just a little bit of salt and pepper and some butter. This is so quick. This came together so easy. I'm building Patrick's actual bowl right here. Mashed potatoes, put some corn on top of that, his little chicken nuggets. Now 
gonna put a little gravy over that and then sprinkle some shredded cheese on top. That's just the way KFC does them. And that was the cutest little dinner and so quick and so easy. But you know, here at our house, you're gonna get it the way you want it if you live here. <laughs> Maddie wanted a big salad, put her tenders over that. That was delicious. Callie actually had a little nugget bowl and she pulled out a couple of leftover sliders, some chips and veggies. And then, of course, I wanted mine, not in the bowl either, and a bunch of veggies and dip on the sides. This was delicious, totally customizable. Today, we're making a baked manicotti, but we are gonna make it quick and easy style by using string cheese. Very simple, basic ingredients, a little shortcut hack that's gonna help us. And of course, I do have a pound of ground beef that I'm starting to brown up over here as well. So let's get to putting this thing together. Over here, I've got my water boiling. It's also been salted really well. I'm just gonna drop my little manicotti shells in here and I've got 12 of them. Actually, there's 14 of them in this packet. We're gonna cook these for about seven minutes and I'm just gonna stir them gently every now and again through that time. And a little tip, whenever you're getting your manicotti out, I've done tour one, so who am I? Don't listen to me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> what my tip is, is to lay them on a baking sheet that you've sprayed with some nonstick spray and they won't stick to it and it'll just be a good place for them to cool and then you can work with them and they're not gonna stick. And here's my little technique for getting them out for the most part without tearing them. I use my spaghetti spoon and a fork. If you got just two forks, you don't have one of these, that's fine. But I grab them like this. I take the teeth of my forks on one end and this little thing on the other. Try to grab a hold of them. I'm tearing this one again. But then you can pour the water out and lay them over here to cool. It also helps if you have a little container of spice drops to eat while you're doing this. It'll help calm your nerves when you're dealing with these things. <laughs> I love these. These are old school candy, but I love them. Over here on this side of the stove, I've got my brown <laughs> ground beef, not my brown beef. <laughs> I've got my ground beef browning up. And I'm gonna throw in about half a cup of diced onions. Looks like I'm gonna throw some in the floor today too. Get that onion down in there so it can get softened up. We're just gonna finish off our beef, make sure it's cooked pretty well through. Didn't have a lot of grease in this. So if you have a cut of meat that has more grease, you can drain that off. But I just added in a little garlic and just a little bit of Italian seasoning. Now let's get all this mixed in. Just about a minute here with our seasonings cooking up. Now I'm gonna add in a 24 ounce jar or can of pasta sauce. I really like this Hunt's pasta sauce. It's old fashioned too. I think I find this at the Dollar Tree. I've seen it in the grocery stores too, but I do think I've got it at the Dollar Tree before. And look what I saw on the back of it. <laughs> Easy manicotti. And it looks really good. It's got some spinach and stuff in it. So I think I'm gonna take a picture of that and pin it to my Pinterest board. Then one day when I have more time and patience, I might try that. That'd be good for an old cold winter day, wouldn't it? Anyhow, I'm just gonna get this mixed in and just let it get sort of warmed through. I've got a nine by 13 casserole dish here. I did spray it with some nonstick spray. And I'm gonna take about half of this meat mixture and put it right in the bottom of this. Just gonna spread it out a little bit. Now, here is the easy part of this. You take your string cheese and your manicotti shell and you just stick it right inside there. Then, we're just gonna lay them down over here, I'm gonna go that way, and lay them in our sauce. These shells are definitely big enough that they would hold two pieces of cheese. I mean, that's a lot. But you know what? This string cheese like this, it's gonna melt really good. And that's just overkill. We just don't need it. We don't need it. And any of my shells, you know, that kind of tore like this, 
I'm just sticking that cheese in there and wrapping it right up. It is going to be fine. Just put it right down in here, kind of seam side down. And I'm going to pour the rest of this sauce right over the top. And I deliberately use less sauce on the bottom because I like to make sure there's plenty on the top. I mean, it's all going to the same place. But you know, I like to see it going over the top, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm, it smells good. It smells really good. There's something about after like Thanksgiving when you've had all of the really good comfort food and the home cooking stuff that like that next week I want like pizza and like tomatoey stuff and things like this. Different kind of food. It's funny to me how our taste buds do us like that. Same thing with like a good old home fried hamburger. After having a bunch of comfort food, you just want something like that. Anyway, I've covered it. No, I didn't put the cheese on it yet, but I've just covered it with full like this. And we're going to bake it at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. I'm going to slide this big bad boy out of the oven ever so carefully. We're going to remove that aluminum foil. Now we're just going to cover the entire top of this with about a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese. My cup and a half was probably more like two cups. But we got a lot of ground to cover here. We got a lot of ground to cover. I'm also going to sprinkle just a little bit of the grated Parmesan cheese. Just whatever kind you get in this green can. And you know, it wouldn't be me if I didn't sprinkle a little Italian seasoning over the top. I just like for that cheese to have some green on it. Now we're going to put this back in the oven uncovered for about five more minutes, just waiting for all this cheese to melt. This was so cheesy and delicious. It hit exactly what I love after the holidays. And it was so fun, so easy using the string cheese. This is one that your kids or your grandkids could get in here and help you with. And it's so fast. This is definitely one of those meals you can come home after the football practice or whatever and get this on the table in a hurry. I'm already thinking of a lot of different things that I want to stuff some manicotti shells with in addition to this string cheese now. This is really, really good. And you know how I was worried that two strings of cheese might be overkill? Next time, I'm going with two strings of cheese because these were really long shells too. And it can handle it. It certainly can. You know those days when you've been to the grocery store then you come home and you don't feel like cooking the groceries. <laughs> That's what this little recipe is all about. We're going to use some of this rotisserie pulled chicken. We're going to have some easy, easy chicken tostadas. You're going to love this little recipe. I've got these pre-made tostadas, but if you did not have these, if you just had regular corn tortillas, you can lay them out on your sheet pan and brush some oil on them. You want them glossy looking. You don't want it like puddling on it that much oil, but get them good and glossy. Coat each side. Put them in the oven about 450 degrees. Cook them about five minutes on each side, and then you would have your own like homemade tostadas. I went ahead and bought these because I knew I was making this tonight. We use these a lot of times when we're making crunch wrap supremes, but you know what? If I don't have these when I'm making crunch wraps, I'll just use a regular O and hard taco shell or even tortilla chips or Doritos. I mean, long story short, what I'm saying, friends, is you got options for anything and everything I make. I just <laughs> like to give you options here. Now we're going to work on the filling or the topping for our tostadas. And I have a rotisserie chicken this, that's already been shredded up. I'm just going to take some of the bigger pieces and shred them up too. But if you do have to make your own little tostadas, this is a good thing to be doing while they're cooking up. We just don't keep torn, torn. <laughs> we don't keep corn tortillas here that much because we just, we prefer flour. But on something like this, you want corn. I'm going to be generous here. We're going to add some other things in here, but you don't want to be skimpy on your chicken. And, like I said, options. You could throw you in some canned chicken. It's not going to have this good rotisserie seasoning to start with, but you could use canned chicken. I like to cook chicken up every week or so in my crock pot. 
with just some seasonings of my choice, your choice, and a little butter on it. And I just shred that up and keep it in the freezer for when I want to put a meal like this together. Okay, that is probably a cup and a half, maybe closer to two cups. Now I'm going to put in about a cup of just jarred salsa. I'm using this right here. It's from Aldi's. It's a small batch. It's supposed to be restaurant style. Then a couple tablespoons of some taco seasoning. I had this opened that I had just used maybe a spoonful out of. So I'm going to finish it off. Then I've got some black beans that I have rinsed and drained. And I've got a can of sweet whole kernel corn that I've rinsed and drained. Now I'm just going to incorporate all this together and I've just got this on oh a medium low heat. Just want to get it kind of incorporated, the seasonings throughout it and everything just kind of warmed up. And this is probably more than what I'm going to need for them four tostadas I laid out. But I'd rather cook it up in small batches if we want another one. I can throw it in real quick. It just takes a second to heat them. But this is one of those fillings that's just good. If I have extra, I'll put it in the freezer. And I can pull it out and make tostadas again. I could throw it on top of nachos. I could wrap it up in a flour tortilla and fry it up in some oil on top of the stove. Like I said, it's all about options. Your girl likes to have choices here. Actually, this old girl just likes to cook once and eat a few times out of it. <laughs> That's really what I like to do is just to kind of, you know, work myself out of a job here. But when you're busy, especially if you're working, your kids are in school, you got sports in the fall, all the carnivals and junk when school's starting back, it is just nice to have things that do double duty and save you time. I'm all about that here. Now we're just building our tostadas. Okay, you know what? Now that I'm loading these up, they're pretty big. I might use all this mixture today. I don't know. I'm gonna put a little Monterey Jack cheese, or a lot, all over the top of mine in my true fashion. I didn't have any in the fridge. I had to go pull this out of the freezer. So, good thing we heat these up in the oven. <laughs> it's going to need it. And I just went with Monterey Jack because I think the white cheese melts pretty on top of all this colorfulness. And it's just a mild flavor with all the other flavors you have going on in here. But as usual, feel free to use cheddar or whatever you like. I'm going to bake those up at 450 degrees for about 5 minutes. This is one of those meals that no one has to know how easy it is. It is filling, it is delicious. Both of these recipes tonight were full of veggies, all kind of in one dish. I absolutely love that. They're perfect for cozy fall nights without a lot of trouble. Look at those beautiful ingredients. Today, we're gonna make a really light lunch or dinner. These are chicken club lettuce wraps. The first thing I'm gonna do is get all of my veggies washed up before I cut them, and I'm gonna wash my little lettuce boats. The way I'm gonna do my lettuce is just to cut the very end of a head of romaine off. Then I'm gonna find me some really sturdy pieces from end to end, and I'm gonna rinse them out and dry them very carefully, hoping not to break them. Now we're gonna mix up our little dressing or sauce. I'm gonna use about a fourth of a cup of Dijon mustard and a fourth of a cup of sour cream. And I'm gonna crack in a little bit of black pepper and give this all just a little stir. This pre-pulled rotisserie chicken has become one of my favorite splurge items at the grocery store. I find it at Aldi. It's also available at Walmart back at their deli counter. And I'm just going to pull out some of the bigger pieces here. And I'm probably just going to use maybe right at a cup of that chicken. It might be a little bit less. I'm just going to rough chop it up into a little bit smaller pieces. But I did want it to stay kind of chunky. You can use shredded chicken if you like. 
bake it up, cook it in the crock pot, your instant pot, however you like to do your chicken. This is just something that I've really enjoyed having on hand. I do lots of things with this throughout the week. Chicken salad, I just put it on top of salads for lunch. Quesadillas, I'm just using it for all kinds of stuff. I'm going to take my clean cherry tomatoes and I'm just going to dice them up into smaller bite-sized pieces. Since I'm just making about three of these here, that is probably going to be enough. Let's do one more. I'll fill it full. I've got an avocado that is very, very ripe. <laughs> Maybe a little too ripe to dice up, but we'll see. And of course, if you don't like avocado, you don't have to have this in yours. These little things are totally customizable to whatever you like. That's the thing with avocados. They're usually too ripe or not ripe enough. <laughs> it's hard to get them right at the point that you want to eat them. Now I'm just going to build my little lettuce wraps here. I'm going to start with my rotisserie chicken. And I chose the biggest leaves that I could because... Y'all know I like to cram stuff full. <laughs> and it looks like I did good with my chicken. I've got just the right amount for three of these. Now I'm going to put a little avocado on each one of them. And these are so good for you. And if you're trying to not eat meat, you don't have to put chicken in here. You could fill this full of any kind of veggies that you wanted. Dare I say, even tofu. My son-in-law, he tried to trick me with some macaroni cheese bites that were actually tofu. He didn't fool me. Let's put these pretty little tomatoes right on the top. I'm going to sprinkle in just a little bit of these real bacon pieces. You could definitely fry you up some bacon, but we didn't have bacon this morning and I wasn't going to make some just for this recipe. Today's actually mine and Patrick's anniversary, 31 years together. That's over half my life, friends. And he wanted sausage, so he got sausage this morning. He got some anniversary sausage. <laughs> my little dressing here is still pretty thick, which is good. I like that because these are probably going to be pretty messy to eat. So it's probably a good thing this dressing is a little bit thicker. How pretty is that? Okay, let's see how I can eat this. Well, it's sort of like a little... Taco. Let's give her a try. This is so yummy. All the good stuff that you love and that little dressing, that's delicious. It's got a real little zip to it. It just kind of wakes everything up. These would be so cute for like a little brunch or something too, like an appetizer. But this makes me a really good dinner right here, guys. They're crunchy and light and so fun to eat. Low carb, low in calories, and I didn't do any cooking. And you could use any kind of toppings that you want. Maddie would love it if I changed it up and made some little chicken Caesar wraps for her. Definitely give this one a try. Click here if you want to see the three brand new casseroles I'm making on repeat this fall. You're going to love them. I'll see you there. And as always, I send you love from my kitchen.